All right, I've been told I only have 10 minutes. So again, Doug, Prestige Motorsports. This video is literally a little different than what we normally do. Um, this customer uh, was very adamant through the process and a great customer though, nonetheless. Um, we'll just point out a few things. We always talk about the personalization, tailoring it to your vehicle, personalizing this inside and out. And this particular project is an excellent example of our abilities within Prestige to maneuver and to push the envelope and develop. And really, at the end of the day, take care of our customers. So this engine is a 363 uh, World Products block. Um, basically, kind of, it, it was based off of our 580 horsepower uh, package that you see listed. Um, pump gas, but we couldn't get the 11R cylinder heads from TrickFlow that we normally run in that combination. And so we chose the AFR, I believe, yep, the 220. I'm thinking a little more volume. Uh, we would get kind of where we wanted to. I was kind of targeting, say, 600 horsepower, roughly. And so it started at 10 and a half to one compression, pump gas, uh, EFI, and kind of the way you see it, so to speak. Um, we have here internally what we call change orders. Obviously, sometimes guys change valve covers or whatever. Well, we've got one, and you'll see how full that page is, two, three, four, five, six. Six change orders through the process on this, this engine. So we went to the dyno, and we were honestly, sadly disappointed. Uh, it just did not make the power that we hoped for um, in comparison to the normal 580 combination. But we also learned at that point the customer was running E85. So we were going to go in there, up the camshaft, and basically try to produce more peak power. But at the same time, if we're running E85, you're really not going to see any benefit or increase in power unless we up that compression. So I think we tried to get in the 13s. We ended up coming shy of that because we had to cut valve pockets in the pistons. So nonetheless, went to the dyno, not happy with the power, contact the customer, completely open and honest with them, had a plan. We tear it back down. We put, you know, dome pistons in it, up the compression. We start basically mocking it all up. We got to cut valve pockets in the pistons. We kind of looked at the manifold to the cylinder head, you know, port transition, seen a little bit that could be played with there, so we kind of raised the roof and, and got a better line of sight to the valve. Uh, so we did all of that. I think the customer added this beautiful Jones drive system through the process, and if I'm not mistaken, we might have even upgraded to fuel injection, or that might have been the normal deal from the get-go. We go to the dyno again, we're really pretty satisfied with the horsepower, and to my mistake, now we're turning 8,000, nearly 8,000 RPM. The oil pan we had selected was not the proper pan. And, and I guess I shouldn't say proper, but it was not up to par for what the engine was now doing. Oil control is so important. So we basically, uh, we're seeing the oil pressure drop, start to flutter. That kind of tells you you're getting windage. You may add oil, remove oil, try to figure out where is its happy spot. At that point, again, called it quits, pulled it off the dyno, and ordered up a Steph's aluminum pan. This one, you'll see it's got a kick out in the side. We call that a power pouch. That collects the oil uh, as it's slinging off the crankshaft. And I'm gonna say in some of this uh, dyno sheet data, so you see how many dyno sheets we have here as well, is that pretty sure the pan was worth almost 25 or 30 horsepower, just an oil pan. So usually you would say the oil pan doesn't make any horsepower, but parasitically, if we're losing power due to windage problems, that was proof. And it's not something new to us, we're, we're, we understand that, but lo and behold, at the end of the day, another cool comparison, we ran it on a carburetor, it does have a vacuum pump, uh, which Jones added to this kit, so it's got vac, um, which is, is a good deal as well. We started with C16, 1050 carburetor, 
made 680 horsepower at 7,900 and like 490 foot pounds. So 680 at nearly 8,000 RPM, great number. We then hooked the fuel injection up on the same fuel and we dropped from 680 to 667, call it, you know, uh, 13 horsepower. Basically, we lost a little bit of power and about five to 10 foot pounds of torque. What we, we kind of attribute that to uh, fuel. So you probably have seen other people's videos. Carburetor on the peak usually will make a little more. It's cooling the air charge in the manifold before it even gets to the cylinder head versus the injector spraying it directly into the back of the valve. That's really why you see a, a slight decrease in power peak with EFI. We then switched over to the E85 or C85 and picked it back up to 670. Uh, so we were 667. So we picked up like three, definitely picked up torque, uh, about uh, looks like 10 to 12 foot pounds of torque. So the, the E85, it, it definitely, obviously it, it helped improve it, but it's way cheaper than race gas. And that's why most guys use it. Uh, we, we, we definitely see better power increases uh, in boosted stuff on E85, but nonetheless, start to finish, six change orders. I think the target was 650. We passed the target. We exceeded the customer's expectation, and lo and behold, we made it happen. That's what we do here at Prestige Motorsports. Thanks for watching.